though. Yo, Andres, did you know that Riptide is on at 2 p.m. on Friday, dude? Yeah, I know. You told me. Dude, come over. I'll make popcorn. Yeah, I'm kind of busy right now, like getting the show and stuff, so I can't go. Oh, that's right. That's okay. We can do it Saturday. All right. Yeah. All right. Bye. Hey Siri, remind me to bring Andres over on Saturday for Riptide. Coming up on this week's episode of Riptide. We have an inside look of when our beloved principal threw the first pitch at the Marlins game. A band came to South Day to share very important information. And the band hosts their annual spaghetti dinner. Hey South Day, I'm Jureli Soporta. I'm Haley Rodriguez and you're watching the 86th episode of Riptide. <laughs> of ongoing recovery, Mr. Perez was given the honor of throwing the first pitch at the Marlins game, allowing South Aid students and staff to go and support him. Tonight marks the beginning of a beautiful month. I thank you for your support. God bless you. The Marlins invited Mr. Perez to throw the first pitch for the game versus the Atlanta Braves. The event was not only intended to honor him, but also raise funds to help pay for his medical bills. The Perez's talked about what the night meant to them. It felt awesome, you know, being out here, the crowd, especially the support that well, we had from South Date. Uh, it made me very happy and emotional. I thought some students would be here. Uh, it's a long drive from South Date, but really the, the amount of uh, students that I saw, faculty members and parents, it was unbelievable, unbelievable. It was awesome. It was, for me, it was like a full circle. We finally have closure to the best stuff, and it's what I needed to kind of just forget what happened and we started Many of his supporters from South Day talk about how much of an inspiration he has been. He's a soldier, he's a fighter, we're here fighting, fighting for him, so this is a blessing in itself. And it was an amazing, he was really positive and happy out there, and I'm glad everybody came to support him. Others like the Milton family heard his story and felt compelled to help by personally installing handicap equipment into the Perez's home. Well, we had heard what had happened to him with the tragedy that had occurred, and we felt obligated to help him retrofit his house. To accommodate a wheelchair. The event showcased beautifully how strong Mr. Prez and his family have been throughout this entire journey. Towards the end, Mr. Prez had an important message to share with his South Dade family. I'll be back soon, I, I guarantee you, I promise you, and uh, before you know it, I'll be there. Of all the things that have been said about Mr. Prez, his son Jordan summed up his dad perfectly. My dad's awesome. Reporting for Riptide, I'm Isabel Lorenzo. October is Cancer Awareness Month. Here at South Aid, we have a survivor, and Andres was able to speak to her about how she felt overcoming this battle. Cancer has proven to be a tough battle for Ms. Fernandez after her diagnosis in July of last year. It was a struggle for her to deal with it, but she maintained a positive attitude throughout. My name is Ivis Fernandez. I am Spanish teacher. I teach Spanish for speakers this year, and I am very glad to be able to encourage you to fight against cancer. I used to go to my regular check-ins every, every year. They did a surgery for me, and the surgery, it came out that I, I had cancer. For me, it was a really surprise, it was impacting. I said, okay, we have to move on. Although it was difficult for Ms. Fernandez, she overcame the illness with support from her friends and family. To work over here every day was hard for me because I was tired so many days. I didn't have the same strength, but my sisters were so good to me, the same my family. After I finished every day here, I had to go and rest at my house, so my husband and my kids have to help me a lot. Here and at my house, everyone was willing to help me. And now I am cancer-free. The cancer cells die. I got a 
surgery and they didn't find any any cancer cell. As Fernandez continues to go to the doctor for regular checkups, she will soon go into remission and make a full recovery. Reporting for Riptide, I'm Andres Rodriguez. The Gooding Band came to South Dade not only to share their great music, but to also give crucial information on financial literacy. Naomi got an inside look. Many young people struggle with financial issues due to the lack of knowledge of financial literacy. The nonprofit organization Funding the Future aims to educate students on these important matters through a rock concert by the band Gooding, who uses their music and experiences to reach students on these topics. I knew more about geometry than I did how to balance a checkbook when I graduated high school. I got through college without knowing what a credit score was. And you cannot get a house or a car or anything started without a decent credit score. A lot of kids don't even know what a credit score is. Employers are looking at your credit score before they hire you some of them. The, the thing that gives me hope that maybe we're reaching them is uh, the questions that we get at the end. Um, a lot of the questions have been um, financial literacy questions, so I feel like they're, they understand that it's not as, you know, let's be honest, financial literacy sounds kind of lame, especially coming from a rock band, right? Mm -hmm. But to me, I think it's very rock and roll to try to help people. The concert would not so, be possible without the help of Laura Steckler, a financial advisor with Raymond James and Associates. Boring. I'm extremely proud to have partnered with the Gooding Band and their not-for-profit organization, Funding the Future. They tour around and go to different schools across the country, delivering a unique musical concert and then speaking to kids on different financial literacy topics. I'm incredibly passionate about it. I think it's incredibly important. And most importantly of all, the kids seem to love it. They ask great questions and learn a ton. The message resonated with teachers who are trying to impart this knowledge as well as the students they are trying to reach. I really think that financial literacy is one of the most important topics that we can learn in high school. In other words, how to manage our money. If we learn nothing else, we should come out as adults and know how to manage money, deal with a credit card, and deal with our credit scores. It's very hard to like think about financial literacy in your future when you're in high school and you just like it's not something people want to think about. Like you don't want to think about college and like being an adult and all of that stuff. But it's important to be aware of your financials and to start thinking about those things because you know it, it's not going to affect you now, but it will affect you in 30 years. You want to be in the state where you can take care of your kids, where you can pay for your kids' college, where you can pay for yourself to do all the things that you want to do. The concert entertains the crowd and sparks interest in the topic of financial literacy. Reporting for Riptide, I'm Amy Every year, the band students host a spaghetti dinner to fundraise money for the program. On Tuesday afternoon, music course through the cafeteria as the band played at the annual spaghetti dinner concert. At the event, the band is able to show off their learned talents live in front of their families and friends. The spaghetti dinner event? It's a tradition that we've been doing at South Dade for, this is our fourth year um, doing it. And uh, basically, friends, family, parents, they come by. We have uh, donations of like spaghettis, spaghetti, drink, food. And then while people are eating, we play music with our wind ensemble, um, symphonic band, jazz band, and our marching band. I think all the performing groups were great. I really enjoyed the music. Um, I think they're considering they have a new band director. Um, they've really come a long way and they sounded fantastic. I enjoyed it. Well, one of the primary reasons I got involved with coming to band events is that my son plays the flute. But um, I actually really enjoy the band events. I would be more inclined once my son graduates to attend the concerts, which is the same students performing the same type of music, but just in a little more um, comfortable environment in the auditorium. While the audience enjoys their spaghetti, the newest instructor, Mr. Guardia, leads the band into their first concert of the year. We usually use this as a fundraiser, so all the proceeds from the ticket sales, the food, go to funding other projects that we have going on. Uh, we're working on uh, having instructors come in and work with the students during, during the year to work on the concert band side, just like we do with marching band, so that's going to help defray that cost. So it's not so much on the student themselves, so they're getting a better experience. Um, I try my best to keep up with what's been going on, but also move in a different direction and focus on different parts of the program. So the students who have been here also get another experience, so they get a whole experience. They get this side, they get this side, we get them together. The response was really, really, really great. Um, I had anticipated less people showing up because 
you know, it's so early, you know, and a lot of things going on, but a lot of people came out, they were very responsive, especially to the concert bands. I was really surprised with that. They were very responsive to the literature that we chose, and the performance was great, so it elicited such a great response. And they, did a, they did a really nice job. As the band plays their audience out, laughs and smiles are shared after a swell evening at the annual Spaghetti Dinner Concert. Reporting for Riptide, I'm Hunter Padilla. As the class of 2017 anxiously awaits for all their senior activities, one of the many occurred on Wednesday. With the help of Ms. Underwood, Mr. Valancey, and Mr. Greer, students were able to take their senior aerial, followed by many games and activities in the auditorium. For the many traditions that South Dade carries, the senior aerial is one that has been carried out for eight years, recognizing the year in which they graduate. This year, it's the class of 2017. Senior Ariel is a tradition here at South Dade Senior High School. I'm not really sure when it started. I know back in 85 when I graduated, we did do it, but someone would stand on top of the auditorium and take our picture. Then it went to where a helicopter, because of course the classes got larger, so a helicopter had to do it. Now we're using drones, which helps us have a lot more control over it. But I think it's a great tradition, and it's something that other schools copy. And it's a really neat idea, too, because we always have the 11th graders come and help out with the 12th graders so they can see what it's all about and to build that excitement for their senior year. It became a tradition in 2010. It's only been going on since 2010. Years ago in the other school, before airplanes and stuff were invented, they used to do it from the roof. But then my son was the editor of a yearbook at Killian, and I saw that they were doing it, and I said, man, we could do better. So I hired a helicopter and a photographer, and we started doing it in 2010. So this is only the seventh, eighth year that we've done an aerial photo. This year's aerial has the added dedication of a bow tie in honor of Principal Javier Perez. Every year we want to incorporate something that's unique and special for that graduating class. And so for 2017, we're missing Mr. Perez. Um, we're praying that he's going to be back with us at graduation time. So we wanted to honor him, so we did a bow tie as well. The senior thing was pretty cool. It was pretty hot, but it was kind of uh, of a new experience with the like, drone and stuff. Senior aerial today, it was... It was fun for the most part. You know, I'm looking forward to a great year. The weather was perfect and so was the picture. Reporting for Riptide, I'm Adrian Dominguez. Charlie's, are you ready? Charlie's, are you ready? What? Look at this play I just did, bro. Look. Ooh. Do you want that? Gonna go there like you. Oh, 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 oh. oh. oh boy. D1, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like, I like that. But the only D you're gonna get is on your report card if you keep watching these playbooks. What you need is more textbooks. Get to work. <laughs> Good morning. Wake up. Wake up. Come on. Come on. It's a beautiful day today. Come on. <laughs> Sweet sister. Lord. Boy, wake up. Excuse me, where are you going? To class. This isn't your class, you're 30 minutes late and you're out of uniform. This is my class, I've been in this class for two months now. And where you sit? Right there in the back of class. What's your name? My name's John. John, oh John, I'm so sorry John, Lord. I didn't recognize your name in the book with all them F's in it. Now go get a pack. Can I help you? Can you go use the restroom? I don't know, can you? I can, but can I go, please? Would you like a referral? That's it for this week's episode of Riptide. If you want to watch any previous episodes of Riptide, <laughs> check out our YouTube channel at South Aid Buck TV. While you're at it, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at SD Buck TV. That's it for today, Bucks. I'm Jarellis. I'm Rahelium. Have, Have a, a great, great weekend. weekend.